All right, so this video uh, is about proportions and uh, a very common way that we solve uh, scale factoring. So uh, something like where I want to go from feet to inches or uh, cups to pints or it's common measurements like that, okay? We use uh, scale factors for those. Uh, what we're going to continue getting into here in this geometry unit is uh, scale factors as far as like I have a full-size tennis court, and then I want to reduce it down to a uh, ping-pong table that I have at home. But we have a scale factor because, right, the tennis court's huge, and the ping-pong table's not as small. So how far am I reducing it, or how, fall, how far small, or how small will I make it? And a scale factor does that for us. So scale factors are a huge part of proportions, but in order to get to scale factors, we have to make sure we're solid here on proportions. So uh, typically what we're doing is we're solving the missing variable. Okay, I mean, that's not too difficult to think about. So let's take a look here at the one here on the top left, uh, 6 over x equals 3 over 2. Okay, there's two different main ways we can solve proportions. All right, one of those ways is by looking at a, either the numerators or the denominators that both have a number. There's no variables involved. So 6 to 3, okay? So I need to know how do I get from 6 to 3. But notice how the arrow goes both ways. Maybe I want to go do it the other way. So how do I get from 3 to 6? I think it's a lot easier, right? Well, to get from 6 to 3, I divide by 2. Okay? Uh, and so you can do it that way. Or, so you can multiply by 2. And that 3 times 2 is 6. Or you can think about it, well, I'll go this way. I'll divide by 2. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. So if I choose to do it this way, okay, so 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that means x divided by 2 equals 2, okay? So when you divide something by 2, the opposite is to multiply it by 2, okay? So multiply by 2, multiply by 2, those cancel, x equals 4, okay? And again, even if I did it the other way, instead of... Instead of uh, Subtracting, I multiplied. Let's say I did it that way. Okay. So let's say I went this way. So I multiply by 2. Again, if I multiply by 2, 2 times 2 equals 4. So x equals 4 in this case. So same exact result, different way of doing it. Here's yet another way you can do it. Okay. And this is the most common way students have learned in the past. Uh, but new, with this new Common Core, we're kind of teaching you equalities with fractions rather than doing it this way, but this is still an effective way. There's this thing called cross-multiplying, which I can only do if it's e two fractions equaling each other. Different than when two fractions are being multiplied together, that's different. So when the two fractions are equal to each other, we can cross-multiply. And again, I can't help myself. I have to put a little butterfly there. It looks so cute. So 6 times 2 is 12. 3 times x is 3x. To get x by itself, we divide by 3, and 4 equals x. All valid ways to solve the problem, so cross-multiplication or by making the denominators equal. Now, it is dependent upon how difficult the problem is. So we'll kind of look at these and uh, go one by one, and we'll choose which method here. So look at the next one here over here. Okay, we'll take a look at that one. Okay. So if we take a look, uh, how do I get from 1 to 3? Right? I could do it that way, because 1 times 3 doesn't equal 3. So that means when I do this, I just have to multiply this by 3. So what that means is 9p times 3 equals 2p plus 5. Okay. So if I choose to do it that way, 9 times 3 is 27p equals 2p plus 5. Subtract 2p because they're like terms. And then I have 25p equals 5. Okay, divide by 25. Okay, now before you start thinking, oh, p is 5, remember the denominator is bigger than the numerator. So think about it this way. I can reduce both by 5. So that goes in there once, that goes in there five times. So p is 1 fifth. Okay, so p equals 1 fifth. Okay, now let's go ahead and say I wanted to do it a completely different way. Okay, rather than multiplying by 3, let's try cross multiplying. But remember, let's say we got p equals 1 fifth there. Okay, whoops, too far. Uh, let's, try, let's try cross multiplying. 
Okay, so 3 times 9p is 27p equals 2p plus 5. So I essentially got the same thing, right? Don't you remember the work I did before? I had 27. In fact, let's go back, see if I can do that. Can I go back that far? Yes, I can. So see, back at this step, I had 27p equals 2p plus 5. So it works out to be the same exact thing. Fantastic. So anyway, two different ways to solve it there. So let's quickly kind of go through the rest of these, see if you can help out. Okay, uh, for this one, let's go ahead and multiply across here. So 2 times 2 equals 4. So if I multiply this by 2, okay, so basically what I'm saying is 5 times 2 equals a minus 3. Okay, 5 times 2 is 10. Add 3. So 13 equals a. Okay. So you could do it that way. Again, if you cross-multiplied, you would have got this, which would have been 20, equals 2a minus 6. Add 6. 26 equals 2a, divide by 2, and a still equals 13. Okay? So there's another way you could do it. Okay, take a look at the bottom left here, starting over here. Okay. If I multiply straight across times 2, I could do the same thing here, okay? So that would be 2 times j plus 1 equals 4. So 2j plus 2, because if I distribute, equals 4. Subtract 2. So 2j equals 2. Divide by 2. j equals 1. So you can see that with if I don't cross multiply, I actually get to deal with less steps and actually deal with smaller numbers. You can still cross multiply, absolutely, and you'll get the same answer, but do you see the kind of method I'm going with here? Okay, so just like with this one, again, to get from 10 to 20, let's multiply by 2. Let's do that on top. So basically, look at this. 3 times 2 equals y, which is just 6. So that made it a lot easier. If you cross multiplied, you would have got 10y equals 60, divide by 10, y equals 6. You would have got the same answer, but see how much easier it is just to kind of look at the problem and see what we need to do. Okay, and then lastly, let's take a look at, ooh, this last one. Okay, so notice how it's not as easy, right? I can't go to 3 to 4 that easily, okay, and I can't go 4 to 3 that easily, but you still can, okay? Consider this. What if I divided by 3 first? So 3 divided by 3 is 1. Then I multiplied it by 4. Wouldn't I get 4? So 3 divided by 3 times 4 equals 4, right? So, but rather than writing this, there's actually an easier way. It's called a fraction. So if I'm dividing by 3 and multiplying by 4, it's kind of like I'm multiplying it by 4 thirds. Okay? So if I multiply by 4 thirds, I'll get 4. So whatever I did to the bottom, I could do to the top. Okay? Which gives me 4 thirds times 2x plus 5 equals x minus 5. Okay? If I distribute, I get 6 over 3x plus 20 over 3 equals x minus 5. Okay, 6 thirds x, doesn't that become 2x plus 20 over 3 equals x minus 5? Subtract x. Okay? So I get x plus 20 over 3 equals negative 5. And then if I subtract 20 over 3 minus 20 over 3, I'm going to get x equals, so I have to make some fractions here. So common denominator would be 3, so 15 over 3. And then minus 20 over 3 becomes negative 35 over 3. Okay, so that's a kind of long way there. Again, if you cross multiplied, uh, you would have got 8x plus 20 equals 3x minus 15. And again, you would have gotten the same scenario that I just got into here. So anyway, long story short, many different ways you can solve proportions. I've done that in a couple of different ways here. Uh, use this information, okay? And uh, I'm going to kind of preview in another video uh, what we're going to be doing with that information.